Hi there, everybody, and welcome to episode 14 of the tutorial sect. I'm Icon, and today I want to work a little bit more on the base design, the money earning strategies in the mid game, and of course, we're going to explore a little bit more our uh, Hellgate procedure here. And I do also plan on cultivating my fellows a little bit more because you know it's impossible for me to just follow one topic per episode but the main topic today shall be how can we earn more money because right now i am on a on an okay spot i don't want to say it's bad but i can't say it's good either so let's uh, place down our fire essence bars here and check out what we can do so we do have our little field of wheat here this is by no means an industrialized uh, size of things so we can do better than that there are different things we can do so first off i want to show here the uh the presence of spirit soil here that's uh, where all that spirit grass is also growing so spirit soil is something special it's kind of like the best the best plot you can grow stuff on so you should always try to reserve that for some for some needy stuff why am i talking about agriculture because agriculture is uh, really really awesome to produce stupid amounts of money so what we're going to do is we're going to put up a field here and we're, we're going to make it rather large i'd say something like that oh i can't enlarge it because of the darkness around one so we're going to grow only one thing here and that's cotton cotton is a wonderful plant to uh, to grow money with i would say because cotton has the severe uh no, the, the wonderful the wonderful characteristic to grow in large numbers grow let's say quickly because right now we're in winter but you can create a, a ton of fabric with that. I mean, we did do that with the Mount Baron combo here, but just adventuring over to Mount Baron. This is always a legit way of earning yourself some cotton. But uh, I personally feel like growing that stuff is way more efficient. Also, you can make all those outer disciples work for something. Right now, we, are, we have only 10 of 12 disciple slots filled, so we could even hire two more. So you can go really, really into large scale operations in this game, because once we are on a higher reputation, we can even take 24 and 36 people. And once you have an army of around 20 or uh, 30 outer disciples, depending on the size of your uh, cultivation grid, you just have a, you just have so much workforce. Lei Long needs a farm tool. Will do. So. This is pretty this is pretty self-explanatory, I think. I don't need to explain to you guys what how we're earning money here, but there are also other ways and means to earn money, and these are quite fun. So right now we still have that storage uh, yard there. Well, I'm accepting it for now, even though I don't like it too much. Here creating spirit stone farming tools, that's okay. Don't you worry about uh, such waste of material. The higher tiered the material, the higher tiered the item, and the higher tiered the item, the better it does its work, aka faster. So don't you worry. I mean, it is rather, rather super sad if you start to build a hole out of the fire essence bars you just created. So that's, uh, but that's usually not happening. If you don't configure these uh, guys, they, I've never uh, catch them using something super, super valuable that I didn't want to use. Okay, so what I want to uh, focus into today as well, and now I'm drifting away a wee bit, but that's okay, is I want to prepare my metal cultivator for the golden core breakthrough here because it's almost end of winter and unlike other elements the metal element is a little bit uh, different so while all the other four elements have a specific time of the year where it's the best time to break through to uh, with the metal element 
just has its optimal time at the end of each season because metal just behaves like that. Don't ask me why, the rules are just like that. I can't tell you more. So we're going to let Hellion here start to cultivate until at least this uh, bar is full. And let's see. Okay, enough of that. I wanted to talk about the wonderful things you can do with spirit stone blocks. So one spirit stone transforms into four spirit stone blocks. You can now go forth and create bracelets out of... Wait a sec out of spirit stone so you can create one bracelet out of two spirit stones and you can sell that bracelet do i need to explain more we create one item out of half a spirit stone and i can only tell you as much it will sell for at least one spirit stone each but it's not only one spirit stone so tldr you can multiply your spirit stones quite easily in this game by just cutting them into blocks and manufacturing bracelets out of that. They are, of course, not the only uh, material. You can also create bells or, or dice or whatever you feel like. But uh, the gist of it is quite simple. As long as you use your spirit stone blocks, you can multiply the, the money with that quite easily. This is also a pretty popular method of uh, creating money for uh, for your sec. But the downside for that is it, it, it will eat up a lot of uh, room because the uh, training spots are invisible. No, that's not what I want to say. Um, because the bracelets, they will all take up one slot in your, in your storage. Unlike the... Um fabric here bracelets will take up a, a huge amount of space in your storage hey there's yet another prayer coin we're so lucky this time so let's see what we can get this time first let's check out if hellion is there okay so we're going to put her back to mind training and now well all we're going to do is we're going to wait for her breakthrough and you see here already a quality of five for halion which is a lot more than we had acquired for zuruji and here this is a wonderful opportunity to show you guys why the um why that chisense stat is so important the only real difference between Hellion and Zuruji is the insanely much higher chi sense of Hellion, which results in a way higher base max chi rating, which results in a way higher golden core. So, seriously, max chi is uh, chi sense is really important. Of course, uh, the earth flux she has consumed already plays a big role in that too. Because Earth Flux, like I mentioned before, is among the most powerful buff uh, medicines to to work with if you want to increase your max chi amount. So let's see and check out what our uh, good friend, the Torch Dragon, has in store for us. There we go. So. Let's see if we can do another Lessons of Torch Dragonolo Dragonology. So, no, we're uh, we're back at the same uh, same options. So, I'm going to put up it. I'm going to pick up the clothes for crafting. I am not sure anymore if these are cool or not, but we're going to try out. So, here, Golden Pants. Increases one's artifact mastery skill and enables travel by wind riding. So artifact mastery is, this is a little bit uh, misleading because artifact mastery is not the same like artifact crafting. So as a matter of fact, the text here was absolutely wrong because we got ourselves now clothing, which should be, if I understood it correctly, good for fighters because we gained artifact mastery one rank each. Okay, guys, that's a wrong tooltip. Because <laughs> Artifact Mastery directly influences your fighting power, affects a character's ability to use artifacts, and that has nothing to do with crafting. So, these are a few kinks of the game which you just have to forgive. They happen, 
and they are part of the problem why this game is uh, rather indie and non-mainstream, but you will get past them. And I'm pretty sure with all the success ACS had, ACS 2 will get a lot better, uh, a lot more professional translation. Pretty sure about that. Tools for chopping are needed. Okay. So beyond that, your options to earn money would be also you can go over here and plot down a field here and grow lotus. Lotus is wonderful. Lotus grows rather easily and it yields a lot of, uh, a lot of food. And the most important thing about it, you can sell it. And that's just super powerful. With Lotus, you can... I've seen people putting up Lotus farms just to earn big, big cash with that. And it works out quite decently. So what we're going to do now is I want to create a little storage here for the fabric and the cotton. The thing about storage, um, storage things in this game is you should not overdo it. Because later down the road, every sect becomes all gets always ultimately a uh, structure available, which makes inventory and item management a lot different. And yeah, you will you will use your storages only for for so and so much time, but at the end of the day, it helps. And stuff like. Uh, Manuals or such will always be, must always be managed uh, manually. Oh, well, manuals must always be managed manually. I didn't know what I did there, but I hope you guys are at least as amused as I am. So, let's create another storage here, which is, in my opinion, extremely important. And like I promised to you guys, we're, going, we're, we're talking today much more about uh, base management in general because I haven't done that topic too much in the past few episodes. So I'm also building with spirit stone walls here. These are, this is a purely aesthetic uh, choice. I love spirit stone for its uh, glow. Uh, I just love that unearthly glow everywhere. And since I plan to do this room as, uh, to turn this room into a storage zone for talismans, and I felt like this is a good thing to uh, a good color to mark my magical items with. So talismans. Talismans tend to crap your base like crazy and therefore I'm storing my talisman paper and my talismans in the same room and nowhere else because that's just... Uh... Believe me when I tell you that you don't want to look for your talismans at every single friggin storage of your base. It's annoying as hell. And with this measure, you can make sure that you know where, where, your, where your talismans are at. Though so male turtle is dying, I don't give a dang. Though, so yeah, you can also do ranching in this game. This is a topic I honestly haven't... Uh... Jiju is dead. I hope you weren't one of my good people here. No. Um, it's a topic I haven't uh, explored too much yet myself either because it's really not that necessary. But here's another thing that I want to point out. Here we can bury people and burying people is a good is a is a benevolent act. And if you bury people, let's check it out. Good deeds 10 points. Can somebody please bury that person here. There we go. Buried person and 20 points for the good side. So if you want to be a good person, bury your dead. It's helpful. So the good and evil uh, alignment thing, well, I've learned lately, and that's something I haven't known before either. It's... Uh, it's desirable to try to be equally as good as, e as you are evil. Ideally, you want to gather as many evil points as good points. Why is that so? Because the sects out there... Uh, let's not screen. 
sects out there are divided into good and evil sects. Like uh, the Mount Lucian and even Fall Abode people here, uh, Purple Cloud Temple people here, are all good aligned and Mount Hundred Insects and Seven Slaughtering Sect. And all these people are in the evil spectrum. And the game actually allows you to play both sides. If you have enough good and evil points, neither the good people hate you nor the evil people hate you. The evil people hate you only if you have um, way more good points than you have evil points and vice versa. At least that's what I know about. I need to do more studies and uh, input from, from you guys is always, as, as usual, very, very welcome. So, with this newfound industry, we can now transform our spirit stones into money, our food into money, and there's another, there's a couple of other methods where you can earn money with. I want to introduce them to you as well. So, let's see. Since Helion is going to be my metal cultivator anyways, I love the war, I love the term metal cultivator, I can't stop. And uh, I'm going to link her to crafting too. I do this because crafting and artifact fighting goes pretty good together. After all, the artifact fighters want the good artifacts, so... They might as well make them themselves and as a little uh, thing on the side you can also create your own um, artifact here their legacy artifact sort of doobie sort of mirage sort of fegda these legacy artifacts are artifacts which you need a recipe for usually acquired by learning a skill and these artifacts are unique, truly unique, whereas the artifacts we craft here are always random. So let's transform some dog feces into an artifact. I love this game for, for all the wonderful things you can do with it. So Helion is now transforming this pile of dog poop into an artifact. So the thing here is a dog poop on its own was not worth more than maximum one spirit stone tops if if even a lot of things are not even worth anything this now should be worth 10 or 15 spirit stones i don't have the numbers exactly in my head but as you see here i just invested 500 chi which recovered while i was crafting that poop into an artifact and created an item which I can sell there. Same goes for stuff like wheat. Worth one spirit stone to begin with, and once you tr turned it into an artifact, it's worth quite a, some nice penny. I must say, this is a mind-numbing, numbing, painful procedure to, to produce money with, because you have to micromanage every friggin' single crafting process but you know sometimes i like pain and it's also a a method worth mentioning because you can literally create money out of everything like there's nothing you can't create money out of with this method because artifacts are a a special category and even a a piece of offcut which is normally something you just can't trade because it's just a, a scrap of something can be transformed into some some stuff with it, which is worth money. I really do like to use this method, especially for one pesky sort of item, and that's stuff like um, random talismans, which spawn sometimes out of an event that are just utter crap. This way, I mark them as the utter crap they are and transform them into an artifact. And when the trader arrives back into town, I, I sell away all the low-tier artifacts. Because you have to know that every artifact has a tier, just like the items here have a tier. Here, spirit wood is a tier 5 item, whereas wheat is a tier 1 item. And when you're crafting stuff, usually the tier of the item just gets uh, preserved. So... A tier 1 item transforms into a tier 1 artifact, usually. The better your character is at crafting, the higher the chance is that the uh, completed artifact 
will be one tier higher, or even two tiers higher. I don't know if you can get past that, I haven't tried yet. Of course, um, the, the artifact crafting skill is not the only thing influencing this. There's, again, Feng Shui in there, and there will be an episode dedicated to crafting and alchemy, probably, but not today. But to keep it short, the better your crafter, the higher the chance to transform things one to your higher. But that's not that important. What I was trying to say, everything, which is just a, t a mere tier one crap item, can be transformed into something worth money. And last but not least, there's also the method of alchemy. So alchemy, well, we're going to spend some inspiration to just learn it, but as you see here, that's not how, how we learn anything. To do alchemy, let's see, do I have somebody with uh, inspiration points left? Yes. To do alchemy, you will need to study, let's say, um, I don't have any golden core who could mentor her that. So luckily, you can't just flag everything marked with alchemy. So to do alchemy, you have to study these, uh, these manuals. And I would strongly recommend you to, to just put that onto one character. Ideally, somebody who is a low-grade golden core or something. Because to do real alchemy, real good alchemy, you will have to, you will want to use one law, which is just uh, providing the best alchemy skills you can wish for. Everything else is just amateur level. And, you know, for amateur level, you can also use that amateur golden core. You get my idea. But for the sake of demonstration, we're now going to let uh, her learn some manual, which I usually wouldn't put onto her because, you know, inefficient. But Tutorial Sect does a lot of stupid things for the sake of demonstration and to, avoid, to, to save you guys from doing it yourself. So... Wait a sec. Ah, we don't... We can't do alchemy now because we don't have an alchemy furnace, of course. The alchemy furnace is for alchemy what the uh, crafting table is for crafting. And as you see here, they can be made out of different materials, too. This will be important later because... Guess what? I think I don't need to say Feng Shui at this point anymore, but... You know the drill. We're going to talk about that uh, in the according episode, but for today, I just want to demonstrate alchemy. So alchemy gives you, once you have the according things set up, the option to transform certain items into new items. You see which kind of level is required and what kind of ingredient is re required, and you also get a little breakdown of what these things do. So stuff like spirit crystals can be uh, made out of spirit stone and there's a lot of things where I can only say it's so friggin much worth it basically the moment your people can produce sun pills or something like that you own a money printing machine I will go deeper into the money making options of alchemy once we dive deeper into alchemy but I just want to give it give it a honorable mention because basically, alchemy is in my opinion the best late game option to to earn money with, because there's just too much good stuff you can do with that. So for example, yeah, let's let's take the uh, fixing pill here. It needs one cinnabar, nine spirit stone, and forty nine spirit leaf. Spirit leaf, by the way, is kind of like the staple good for uh, the staple plant for alchemy. You can grow it yourself or go over to Alchemist's Peak and harvest it there. So we're going to put up a field of this too because Spirit Leaf is just awesome uh, to have, especially if we want to do this later. I just forgot if, yeah. So to grow these things, you need a herb garden. A herb garden, areas are just like farming areas with just one difference here everything you grow is more or less 
alchemy, uh, well, alchemy oriented, put it like that. So, purity leave, and last but not least, we're also going to put up some of those here. So here I'm going to use the spirit soil for the ginseng and the lingji, because these are the, the lingji and and ginseng are a little bit more demanding. There we go. Okay. And with these methods, you can just earn a crap ton of money and put it into different words. If you do it like uh, like that, if you go for uh, like the, the real big moves one day, you can easily to put it, create as much money as you want to. But believe me when I say it ain't as easy as it looks like, because you can also burn money in tremendous uh, uh, amounts. Because you might have already noticed the, the prices of the trader are a wee bit high for some things. And it's super easy to burn 20 to 40,000 spirit stones just for a couple of items. And, you know, one fabric, one spirit stone. 20,000 fabric. It's also, uh, at the end of the day, 5,000 units of cotton, which you need to grow and process. And that doesn't do it. That that doesn't uh, get done on its own. So, it sounds pretty uh, OP at the start. But what I'm trying to say here is the game has just insanely high um, scaling for, for certain things. And that's that. Okay, now we have these zones, and I seem to have nobody busy for the carrying. So, Ming Li, you are going to be my carrier drone. I totally gave up in this game in configuring the work schedules. I don't know if you guys are behaving uh, more organized than me, but I discovered that for me, everything worked out fine by just assigning specialists like that. Instead of breaking my noggin about how these people have to work, I did this. It might be not the most efficient way of doing it, but at least it saved me from micromanagement madness. You can do it, of course, better on your own. Just uh, wanted to showcase that. So as you see here, we have industrialized our sect a little bit today. And sadly, winter ain't over yet. So here's another thing which we can do. Because there's a problem. There's a, the, there, there's a temperature of minus 26 degree. And, you know, it's not exactly the kind of thing where you can grow things. So here's the deal. Fences can't uh, form rooms. And that's bad. But if you create a room, and that's something you need the, uh, the mod I'm using for reading out more grid info, if you build a room and if there's no specific roof over it, this room is sunlit. So to make a room dark, you need to put a roof over it. I think I forgot lots of uh, rooms to be roofed. Yikes. Let's change that, at least for the rooms where people sleep. Um, so we could now also, and that's something I've seen quite often, we could now also just draw walls around this field. And since this is uh, from this point on a room, it has a manageable temperature. And you might already guess where this is leading us. If something has a manageable temperature, you can manipulate the temperature with items. And therefore, sec, give me some, give me a moment. <laughs> and therefore, you can grow things even in winter. So you can put up these indoor farms, and they are really, really beneficial for you. Another thing, while we're at it, and we're at the end of the episode, and a little goodie for people who were paying that long attention, it is absolutely crucial and important and super, super good for your dog if you try to have at least every crop 
every fruit, everything in the game at least once. Because later, when he's mature, we're going to have to feed him all manner of different things to make his stats grow. Among those are also mushrooms. Mushrooms can only do grow in the dark. So while this farm here, once it's done, will be a wonderful sunlit farm, this will be a dark farm. By just placing a roof over this uh, room once it's done, you can grow mushrooms inside there. And mushrooms are really important for your dog. So round this up with a little bit of a uh, field where you grow some pear to have some fruit for the dog. And last but not least, well, you would need some some tubers, so-called <laughs> well, tube plants, I don't know. The, this is basically only lotus, and therefore, well, since we don't have any water in our vicinity, this will be a little bit hard. If anybody knows a good trick for my situation, I'm all ears, because I don't know how to how to manage that. Alrighty, friends. So this is this has been today's episode. We have talked a lot about money making, and I hope it was somewhat informational. I know it has been a lot of information to deal with, and sadly, it's by no means complete. So there are several other methods of earning spirit stones in this game. I just scratched the most popular ones here, and the or the ones I really think are cool. And yeah, feel free to drop your methods in the comments down below. I'm all ears to hear that. Also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed to make it more visible. And of course, check out the channel daily videos. Subscribe, turn on the bell, and you won't miss anything in the future. Let me thank you guys one more time for all your time and attention and all this uh, good and positive feedback. It really, really means a ton to me that you guys appreciate my work here so much. And the fact that I keep breaking my noggin to make this game, to break this game into sizable chunks. You guys are awesome, and I deeply appreciate that. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.